Welcome to Project 88. Since its inception, our mission has been to make classical music accessible to the community, promote artistic development, and provide affordable, high-quality music education to Berwyn and surrounding areas. Tonight's performance is the last installment of our program, Into the Musical World, Concerts for Youth. Our guest tonight is David Schrader, who is one of the most brilliant artists and minds I've had the opportunity to meet, and I'm extremely grateful to welcome him in his debut at Project 88. As some of you know, Project 88 is named after the number of keys on a modern piano. Tonight, he will introduce and perform on two of its predecessors, the harpsichord and clavichord. So, please, welcome the incredible David Schrader.
Good afternoon, and welcome to Project 88. Thank you all for uh, joining us streaming live today. Um, and uh, I have to make an admission at the beginning of this concert, though, and that is that I'm really playing Project 55. I just counted the keys on my instrument, and uh, that is all I've got here. Um, but you've just heard two pieces by Antonio de Cabezón, who was a Spanish master during the 16th century. He was born sightless, uh, but became the most respected organist in Spain. In fact, there is a memo from King Philip II as he was visiting Portugal that goes back to Madrid, and he says, send someone here, send Cabezón here immediately. There's no one who knows how to play the organ. Uh, but anyhow, um, uh, you're going to hear another piece from a little bit later period in Spain by Padre Antonio Soler a little later on the program. Um, next along, though, are two pieces by one of my favorite composers, uh, Dietrich Buxtehude, who lived out most of his career in the northern German town of Lübeck, though he himself was born in Denmark uh, and had his first job in Sweden. And Buxtehude, uh, as you'll find out, it was a very extroverted kind of musician, but with a deep melancholy at the same time. Uh, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about Bach later on. Uh, but suffice it to say that um, Padre Antonio Soler served the Spanish court uh, in the 18th century. He was a Hieronymite monk at uh, a very large building, it built originally by Philip II called El Escorial. And it sort of was a combination of a basilica, uh, a monastery, a college, and a palace. And this is where the Spanish royal family went in the winters, uh, excuse me, in the autumns. Sorry about that. And um, it would have been at El Escorial that um, the Queen's famous music teacher, Domenico Scarlatti, would have met Soler. Uh, so don't be uh, duped into thinking that Soler was a student of Scarlatti. He was simply a composer in a slightly different style um, who uh, came later. Now, about my instrument, this is a single manual, that is one keyboard harpsichord, made by Willard Martin in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It was made in 1997, but it is a copy of an instrument that we're not sure ever existed except in writing. It has two sets of strings, one that's more mellow, like this, one that is a little pingier. And they can both be used together, too, as you'll hear as we go along this evening. Um, so uh, I think we'll, at this point, go on to the books to Hooded Pieces. And uh, I know you'll enjoy them. The first is a C major fugue in the style of a jig. And the second is what we call a preludium. And a preludium for a northern German Lutheran organist was a, a chance to be very extroverted from the organ loft. Um, we are not in North Germany, and uh, I'm not playing an organ, but most organ music, clavichord music too, that's a softer keyboard instrument, which um, if I'm nice to these people, they might ask me back to play sometime. Um, these would have been the pieces where the preludia were heard, because often there would be tuning problems with the organs, which were tuned in an earlier system. So. Um, even though you'll hear these as organ works most of the time on recitals, tonight you're going to hear it probably as it was heard in the 17th century, played in a more intimate setting on either a clavichord or a harpsichord. Um, the mechanism of the harpsichord plucks the strings. You could say that the harpsichord is like a large guitar or lute laid on its side, and there's a key mechanism. When I play a key, a device called a jack jumps up and it's got a little guitar pick in it. And that's what produces the sound. Now, the harpsichord had its origins probably sometime around 1500. I've played the oldest playable harpsichord in the world, and that was made about 1530. Uh, but harpsichords continued to be made right alongside pianos until about 1800, when the style of music um, began to suit the piano better than the harpsichord. Nevertheless, the harpsichord had a big revival in the late 19th century 
and is going strong nowadays. I would say in our contemporary civilization, we have more harpsichord builders than probably uh, ancient Europe did. Uh, because of course we've got more people now. But anyway, uh, onward to the Buxtehude, which I hope you enjoy.
We end today's program with the third partita in uh, A minor of Johann Sebastian Bach, who scarcely needs an introduction. Uh, one thing I did want to say, though, uh, if you were looking at the program, uh, you'll see that the Soler piece that you just heard ended with what's called an intento. And that is a Catalan word that calls up a Spanish word that um, always implies a fugal or um, contrapuntal kind of piece. Now, with regard to Bach and the partitas, these were f some of the very few pieces Bach actually published during his lifetime. Uh, in those days, publication was more for prestige, just like some performers make CDs now to get your name out there. And Bach refers to this as the first part of a big collection that he would complete in the next 10 years from uh, 1731 on called the Clavier Übung, or Keyboard Practice. And uh, these partitas all begin with an individual introductory piece. In this case, it's going to be a fantasia, uh, which is like a big two-part invention on steroids. And it's a beautiful piece of counterpoint. And then it's followed by dances and character pieces. We have an allemande, a courante, a sarabande, and then one piece called a burlesque, uh, and another called a scherzo. Burlesque means to make fun of something, and scherzo is a joke. And then it ends up, as so many of these pieces do, with a jig. Uh, and again, it's good to be with you streaming live, and I hope you enjoy the Bach.
Thank you for joining us for tonight's presentation on keyboard instruments. We hope you enjoyed it, and we also hope that you learned a few things along the way. We sincerely thank David Schrader for his time and energy in putting this performance together. It's not too late to follow us on social media via Instagram and Facebook. And also, remember, we can still be found on YouTube, where you can view all of our previous 2020 concerts. Next week, we're back to celebrating 250 years of Beethoven with a performance of piano sonatas. Our performer will be our own executive and artistic director, Elidor de Paula, as he shares a selection of classical works by both Beethoven and Bach. Plan to be here next Saturday at 6.30 p.m. Central Time for this concert. As always, we are grateful for your viewership this evening and for your continued support of Project 88 and our mission to make classical music accessible to the community. We could not continue to grow and thrive without the generous support of patrons like you. For now, please be well, take care of yourselves and neighbors, and we hope to see you right back here again next week. Good night.